boxes, substitution boxes, some XOR operations, swap operations, circular ship, like that it has many components. Now, our next topic is components of block ciphers. That's what you are saying. So what are the components that made the block ciphers as a strong one? Okay, so modern block ciphers normally are key substitution cipher in which the key allows only partial mappings on the possible inputs to the possible outputs. Modern block ciphers normally are not designed as a single unit. I told you they are not designed as a single unit. To provide the required properties of a modern block cipher, they are made combination of different components. I told you the single block is combination of many components like P boxes, that is permutation boxes, S boxes, that is like substitution boxes, circular shifts, swap, like that we'll have many XOR operations, circular shift total XOR operations, split and union or split and join. Like that we have many operations. So let us see one by one. So by seeing all the components of the block cipher. Okay. So let us start with the first component of the block cipher that uh, we have more importance is P box. So we call this P box as a permutation box. So generally this permutation box is almost equal to or parallel to the traditional transposition ciphers for characteristics. So what is transposition cipher will do? It will not change the data. It will not change the data, the value of the data. It will rearrange the bits. It will rearrange the bits. So it transposes bits. We can find, okay, it transposes bits. That means it will just rearrange the bits. I told you about the transposition. How it happens like by using you know, three ones and four, four zeros I showed you like that only permutation box also works. But we'll get three types of permutation boxes. We'll get three types of permutation boxes. Those are straight permutation boxes, compression, uh, we can compression P boxes, expansion P boxes. Like what is uh, in straight P box? What is in straight P box? So the straight P box takes n bit as input and produces n bit as output. That is within that in between it will do the permutation. It takes n bit as input and it produces n bit as output. Whereas expansion, expansion means even more. This expansion P boxes will take n bit as output and they produce m bits as output where here m is greater than n. Here m is what? Greater than n. Why? Because it will expanding. It is expanding the value of n. That's why we are saying it as expansion P box. And the next one is compression P box. Here also it takes n bit input. It produces m bit output. But here m is less than n. That is it takes n number of bits and compresses to m number of Bit. So let us see uh, each one. That is how a straight box works, how an expansion P box works, how an compression P box works. So uh, this is uh, a straight P box. This is right, a straight P box. Okay. Before going there, this is how a straight P box works. So if you take a straight P box here, it is having how many bits? Five bits as input. It is having five bits as input and it converting that five bits. So see here. It is taking that five bits. It is taking that five bits and it's producing a output as five bits. That's why we're calling it as straight B box. See how how it rearranges is its its problem or its idea. How it rearranges is its idea, no problem. So, but it the property of straight P box is what? It should take five bit input and it should produce five bit output. So these type of permutation boxes are called as straight P box. If you consider compression P box here, if you see the compression P box is taking five bits as input and it is producing three bits as output. So number of bits is compressed, it is reduced. So which bits it's, it is going to uh, not converting is depends upon the um, pre-program, okay? Similarly, expansion. So if you consider it takes n bits input, it takes n bits input and it is producing m bits. That is taking three bits and it is producing five bits. It producing five bits. So this is how we call it as expansion P box. And let us see one by one. This is a simple example. Now let us see one by one how these are going to work. Okay. Let us see one by one how this is going to work. So a straight P box uh, with n inputs and n outputs is a permutation. There are n factorial possible mappings and factorial possible mapping. So the same, how many permutations we have? I told you, no, we'll have n factorial permutations. For example, I told you just before when we take in the example of transposition, if I have three bits, if I have three bits, 
I can arrange them in three factorial ways. I can arrange them in three factorial ways. So that is six ways. So in the same way, if you consider the side box, how many bits I am taking? I am taking three bits. Now I can rearrange them in three factorial ways. Like this one, two, three converted into one, two, three. See, the input is same. If you observe here, all the things, the input is same. But the output, how we are rearranging these n bits is different. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rearrangements I am doing. But see, uh, all the P boxes generally, uh, they are all keyless. They are, are keyless. Why I am saying keyless is the, these will not depend upon the key. These will not depend upon the key. Now, if can, the, the, but they are depend upon the size. They depend upon the size. How much input we are put, we are giving, they are depending upon the key. And these P boxes can be implemented as hardwired or by using some software. Hardwired or software. So if they are using a hardwired, they are already predefined. So for example, if you consider this predefined, it is uh, implemented by using this hardwired thing. If it is implemented by using this hardware thing, it is predefined. That is the first bit in for the is given as output to the second bit. The third bit is given as output to the first bit. Second bit is given to output to the third bit. We cannot change them if it is hardwired. And similarly, if it is software also, the same change is pre-programmed. The change is pre-programmed. So these are all keyless. Remember, permutation boxes that we consider all, all keyless. Okay. Now we'll see about the next one. So P, P box are normally keyless, which I told you, which means that the mapping is predetermined. If the P box is implemented in hardware, it is pre-wide. If it is implemented in software, a permutation table shows the rule of mapping. So if you consider this permutation table, if you consider this permutation table, this is of size uh, a 64 bit. This is of P box of size 64 bit. So what does this box table is saying is, if you consider the 64 bit, the first bit of the output is 58 bit, the second bit is 50, the third bit is 42, the fifth, fourth bit is 34th bit in the input from the input. Similarly, the last bit in the output is the seventh bit from the input, seventh bit from the input. This is how if you are implementing a permutation box using a software, it will have a predetermined table, predetermined table. So if you apply anything, anything, any 64 bit, it will rearrange the data in this by using this table, by using this table only. Okay. Now we'll see about compression P box. We'll see about compression P boxes. So if you compre consider compression P boxes, a compression P box is a P box with N inputs and M outputs where M is less than N. So some of the inputs are blocked and do not reach the output. So if you see, this is an example. This is an example where a 32 bit data passed to the compression P box is converted to a 24 bit data. So here, what are the bits that we are missing? What are the bits we are missing? So let us see. One, two, three, I have. I have four, five, six. I doesn't have seventh bit. So how many bits are missing here? Eight bits are missing. So let us find them. Seven. So seventh bit is not converted from input to output. So does I have eight here? No, I don't have eight. Eight is also missing. Does I have nine? No, nine is also missing. I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I don't have 15, 16, 17. I don't have 15, 16, 17. Now, does I have 18? Yes, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, right? So, 23, 24. Does I have 23? No, I don't have 23. 23 is missing. 24 is missing. 24 is missing, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Again, 1, 2, 3. So this is 24 data. So this is actually okay. I have 32 is the max, so I have 32 bit data. So I'm missing with 7, 8, 9. Right? 7, 8, 9 is missing. Then 13, 14. 17 is there. So 17 is there. So I am missing with 15, 16. Then I'm missing with 23, 24, and 25. 25 is missing. So 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Right. So how many bits we are converted is this list 88 bits list. So what are the bits that are missing is 7, 8, 9, 
15, 16, 23, 24, and 25. So total 3 plus 2, 5 plus 3, 8 bits are missing. This is how a 32-bit data is permuted and are transposed into 24 data by using the compression key boxes. So which bits we are blocking, it depends upon the program. That's how we write the program. So this is an example of compression key box. Now let us see how we are applying to the expansion key box. So an expansion key box is a key box with n inputs and m outputs where m is greater than n. Some of the inputs are connected to more than one input. Some of the inputs are connected to more than one input. So a permutation table for an expansion key box has m entries, but m minus one of the entries are repeated. So permutation table for a 12 into 16 expansion bit. So if you are converting 12, if you are converting a 12 bit data, if you are converting a 12 bit data into 16, so what is the difference between these two four? So four bits are repeated, four bits are repeated. Now let us find what are the bits repeated. So one, is there any occurrence of one? Yes. Now nine, is there any occurrence of nine? Yes. 10, is there any occurrence of 10? No. 11, is there another occurrence of 11? No. 12, is there any other occurrence of 12? Yes. 2, is there any occurrence of 2 again? No. 3, yes, I have two occurrences of 3. That's it. So these four bits are the things which are repeated again. That is how, that is how these uh, small boxes are going to be expanded. So for example, if you consider, if you consider, you know, in the DES algorithm that we are going to see in the next lectures, DES algorithm there, initially we will uh, consider a 64 bit. Initially we consider 64 bit and then we reduce the 64 into 56. 56, okay, 56. So what we are doing here, we are applying the compression P box. Similarly, in the initial stages of that uh, DS algorithm, we'll take the 64-bit data and we apply the initial permutation and again we'll get the 64-bit data. So here what we are doing, here we are doing the striped P-box permutation. We'll see, I, I'll let you know when we are discussing about DS. Yeah, so now we need to know whether the <coughs> P-boxes that we are doing is invertible or not. So, for example, if you are converting a 64 to 64 bit, it is invertible. It is invertible. No problem. Why? Because for 64 bit data, we are getting 64 bit data. So, that is easily invertible. The invertible means convertible. But if you are taking in 32 bit and if I am, uh, if I am dividing it 24, now does I know which bits I have uh, at the receiver side? Does I know which bits are, they are missing? No, it doesn't know. So, inversion or invertible property is true for straight P boxes, but it will not be true for compression expansion P boxes. So, a straight P box is invertible. This means that we can use a straight P box in the encryption cipher and it's inverse in the decryption cipher. But for compression and expansion P boxes, it is not possible. We'll use this type B box. I told you, you know, 64 we convert into 64 by using initial permutation DES. Again, finally, we are when we are taking the output, we'll do the reverse. We do the reverse. Okay. Now, this is the example which shows which shows okay, invertible or not. Invertible or not. So if you take this uh big that is how many bits we have? Six bits we have, right? We have six bits. Now, how it is invertible, I'll show you. If I take a six bits, how it invert. So this is how generally it is uh, encrypted. Consider it is encrypted. So for example, I have, if the original da data is six three four five two one, now I'll assign indexes to it. So now I'll swap this both. I'll swap both. That is, I'll swap one two three four six and six three four five two one. This will be now. Now based upon the index. I will rearrange these values based upon the index. I'll rearrange these values. So six, one, six comes in there, two, five, three, two, next four, three, four, one. So this is the data I need to send to the uh, receiver. Now, now again, I need to, if at the receiver, I de if I decrypt this table, I need to get this value back. Now again, I'll apply the same thing. So I'm taking, I'm applying the thing, invertible thing. Now if I'll take it as same thing, one, two, three, four, Five six one two three five four five six. Now I'll do the swapping. Now I'll do the swapping here. Second step. I'll do the swapping. That is one two three four five six. If I do the swapping, so this will be 
six five two three four one now now i'm going to arrange the data on the order of these indexes now the inverted table will be the inverted table will be what is that one is six so that one position i have six what does the second index posing second index posing is three well second index is posing three so six three what is the third index is posing four so six three four now what does the fourth is posing five six three five next what is the fifth index is posing two two what is the sixth index is posing one so did i got the same thing or not yes six three four five two one so that's why we are saying straight p boxes are invertible once we convert these original table into an encryption by using a procedure if i apply the same procedure if i apply the same position reverse order we'll get the original data i did i said so i converted i emitted this into this table now i applied the same process in the reverse order and i got the original table so that's why we are calling it as s boxes as invertible but the remaining thing the remaining in the things in the sense what compression e box and expansion p box they are not invertible so if i take this conversion p box if i consider this conversion compression p box so one three i have taken as one and two now in the inverse one is taken as one and two is taken as three now what about two i have no input regarding two so this is not invertible similarly here i have expanded one two one one two two and two two three now i have one two three but i'll take and I, I cannot one of the two inputs one comment cannot be selected definitely so either we can take anything who doesn't know which one has been duplicated which one has been duplicated so this is the problem with uh compression and p box only straight boxes are invertible only straight boxes are invertible okay now we'll see about the next component that is used mainly within the block cipher that is yes box it is what yes box so an s box or substitution box can be thought of as a miniature of substitution cipher however a s box can have different number of inputs and outputs in other words the input to an s box could be n bit word but the output can be an m bit word whether maybe maybe m on n may or may not be equal may or may not be equal. there is no problem may or may not be equal so modern block ciphers normally use keyless s boxes where the mapping from the inputs to the output is predetermined remember that one in the p boxes i told you that it is predetermined again in s box also it is predetermined in s box with n inputs and m outputs we call the inputs as x0 x1 so on xn and the outputs as y1 so on ym the relationship between the inputs and the outputs can be represented as a set of equations and coming to the s boxes we'll have two types of s boxes linear s boxes and non linear we can represent s boxes in the form linear form or we can also represent s boxes in the non linear form so generally s boxes the functions can be like this so the output yn will be the function of x1 x2 so on xn similarly uh, the function y2 output y2 is a function based upon x1 x2 so on xn like that we can derive the outputs so if you are using an linear s box in a linear s box the above relations can expressed as y1 is equal to a11 into x1 with x odd with a11 into x2 x1 again a1 and into so x on like this they are based upon these equations we can use in linear s box but these e equations are not possible in the not possible in the non linear s box so in a non linear s box we cannot have the above relations for every output so coming to the invertibility of the s boxes as s box or substitution cipher in which the relationship between input and output is defined by a table or a mathematical relation and s box may or may not be invertible in an invert may or may not be invertible but if it is invertible if it is invertible is in an invertible s box the number of input bits should be equal to the number of output bits remember that one so we said that in the permutations also which box is permutation box invertible the boxes for which number of inputs is equal to number of outputs that are only invertible the same case with the s boxes also if generally s box may be or may not be invertible if we say a particular s box is invertible then we should note that the number of inputs what they are providing to the 
uh, S box are exactly same with the number of output bits.